What's up guys, Ben Clark here for Adapt and Form. Uh, normally I'm doing fitness videos and that, but today I'm very excited because I'm starting something new for my channel, and that is interviews with some people that are doing exactly what this channel is all about, and that is adapting to perform. Um, today I'm very, very excited to introduce you to my friend Lindsay. Um, so Lindsay used to be in the Royal Signals um, as a reserve, yeah, um, and she, uh, had a spinal cord injury um, about 10 years ago and after that she did things like personal training and then eventually went in to do the Invictus Games where she came away with a gold medal for Great Britain which was an absolutely amazing achievement. So thank you very much for joining me today Lindsay. Yeah. Um, so let's start off with what you were doing a bit more in detail, what, like what your life was like before your injury and that like um, and leading up to the point where obviously that happened. So. Yeah, so uh, before I had my accident, um, I was a very active person. Um, I worked for uh, Barclays House and Paul as a finance analyst. Um, and as you said, I was also in the Royal Signals as a reservist. Um, did a lot of sport, a lot of fitness, because obviously I had to be very fit in yeah. reserves. Um, used to love horse riding, riding motorbikes, my own motorbike, going on holiday. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I was pretty much at my fittest, um, yeah. you know, leading up to the point that I had my accident and everything was tickety-boo in life, everything going really great. Um, my accident happened in August on um, a really bright and clear sunny day. Um, yeah, I just didn't see it coming really. Um, the, the way the accident happened, I was on my motorbike, had my partner that I was with at the time was on the back and um, we approached a roundabout, it wasn't busy at all, it's fairly quiet, as I said, bright sunny day and unfortunately there was um, a lady that was in a car and she was using a sat nav and she was in the wrong lane basically and yeah. she realised at the last moment she was in the wrong lane, it's also a designated lane to come off yeah. um, and she cut across into my lane without indicating or um, checking her mirrors and unfortunately it clipped my motorbike and it was enough to um, to break my back um, yeah. so yeah paralyzed my chest down uh, and I knew instantly yeah. as well I kind of yeah I knew so it wasn't yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good um, so yeah life-changing moment mm. so in that sort of moment where you had your um, crash like what sort of things were going through your, you said you felt that sort of instantly, what sort of things were going through your mind in terms of like, like, did you, like, did you know what? Well, like, initially yeah. at the, um, at the accident, uh, I guess it was, yeah, I, I knew that uh, it was bad, I, I pretty much knew I'd broken my back, um, and I think initially I just wanted to know how bad it was and whether I would actually walk again. Yeah. So it wasn't until we got to the hospital and they did all the x-rays and then um, the doctor came into the room to give me the results of it and I knew just by the look on his face that it wasn't good and I, yeah. I said to him, look, I know it's bad but am I ever going to walk again? Um, and he shook his head and it was at that point that I went into complete shock yeah. and I think I was shaking for like three days and crying and just assumed that my life was over. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't imagine how I was going to be able to do anything ever again. i um, being paralysed with chest down, it just, even to be able to sit up, um, it was just, just the smallest thing, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had no idea what was going to happen. And it was like that for the first sort of couple of weeks, because I was at a general hospital, and obviously, although they were great, they did a great job looking after me, they weren't specialists in spinal injury. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't until a bed became available at Salisbury Hospital, which is where they have all their spinal team. Um, yeah, it wasn't until I went to them that, you know, the staff and the nurses were telling me, no, no, it's not like that, you're still going to be able to do this, you're still going to be able yeah. to do that, and started to mix with other people that were further down the road with their recovery, and it wasn't long before I realised that actually, you know, I think I will be okay, um, yeah. it's not going to be what I thought, you know, things are going to be different and fortunately for me, I think I did accept it quite quickly, although it was difficult, um, yeah. I did accept that this was a permanent situation that wasn't going to change and that, mm. I think it then 
became a challenge, like, which obviously I like. Yeah. Hence, you know, all the things that I've done yeah, uh, up to that point. So um, my recovery and my rehabilitation. So, you know, when I was doing physio, learning how to transfer, getting in and out of a car, all these things, it just became a challenge. And I had that mindset like I had in the military to just dig deep and try your hardest and yeah. and yeah, just do the best you can. And that really helped. I yeah. think um, my recovery was, I was only in hospital for four and a half months. Back then it was normally about eight or nine months and I, I owe that to the army, definitely. Yeah. It, it gave me that mindset, so. Yeah, that's good. Um, so was there like any specific moment, like you were saying like things happened over time, was there any like moment that you remember during that rehab process where it's like a, almost like a light switch, if anything, like where, or is it just like small bits over time? Definitely had a light switch moment. It was um, the nurses had, had asked uh, a girl called Marta, a Polish girl, who was literally just about to go home. So she'd done all of her rehab and they asked her if she'd come and talk to me. Mm. So uh, I remember one day she came wheeling into the ward um, and I'd only been injured you know at that point maybe three weeks um and she just looked so bright she had all yeah. her hair done makeup <laughs> on she's spinning around in this little chair and she's like hi Lindsay you know I'm Marta I want to talk to you and ask me anything you want and I think she stayed with me for about two hours um, oh. and I absolutely picked her brains and pieces <laughs> asked her so many questions and after she went, I had visitors um, later that day, and they said that as soon as they came in, they could just tell straight away that yeah. there was something different. I just felt so much more positive after seeing her, and she hadn't even left hospital yet. I think she'd maybe done some weekend, you know, uh, visits going home, but she'd already done enough to know that she was going to be okay, and yeah. she was able to pass it on to me, and it made a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. It's that's good that is yeah, yeah. It's, it's really important i feel like sometimes in life that it or it, it almost takes just that little bit of that something here or there like one thing or two things that really makes a difference and more often than that that is another person right, in that situation or that, yeah which yeah i think it just sort of grew from from that really i think the the other uh moment if you like of, of realizing i was going to be okay was um uh, one afternoon they had um, some people come in from the Backup Trust. Yeah. So the Backup Trust are an organisation that help people um, that, that have been injured no matter how long um, regain confidence and self-esteem and skills to feel they can go forward with their yeah. lives. Um, so it's a great place to, to meet uh, other people with spinal injury. And they do lots of different courses and activities um, which are fantastic. But on this day at the hospital they had a couple of volunteers come in and do a bit of a chat and yeah. also teach wheelchair skills which are vitally important once you leave hospital yeah. to be able to cope with day-to-day -day stuff because not everything is flat wide corridors yeah. you know the world really isn't like that at all and it's a bit of an obstacle course really <laughs> um but uh yeah they were just fantastic seeing them and you know they'd been injured for quite a few years and yeah. you know some of them had traveled some of them had uh, children of their own, had, you know, gone off and done various things with their life. And they just, to me, what stood out was that they, they just seemed so normal. Yeah. You know, there wasn't anything particularly special about them. They mm. were just normal people living a normal everyday yeah, life. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that, that really did leave quite a mark on me so much that I, you know, became a volunteer with them yeah. um, afterwards because I, I feel the work they do is mm. just amazing. Yeah, we'll go back to what you do as a volunteer work in a minute. Um, so, like transitioning from the rehab in hospital, um, obviously in the UK we don't have necessarily therapy post hospital. Like, there's not really that yeah. set up in the community in that. Um, and obviously, you said like you're going from wide corridors, nurses there every day, physio every day, and you suddenly go out into the big wide world and there's not, none of that like how was, did you find that transition oh, hard I'll be I won't lie um, it was it was really difficult uh, it's a, a massive reality shock yeah uh, even though you think you're prepared for it obviously the 
staff at the hospital, they do an amazing job. I can't fault them. And they do mm. as much as they can yeah. to prepare you for it, but still, it is a huge shock. Um, yeah. And you, you know, you're, you're on your own. You're suddenly on your own, and and you've got to deal with all these things and just simple tasks. You know, my my challenge would be just to be able to get up that day to yeah. get showered. You know, toilet, shower, get dressed. You know, would mm. be exhausting. Yeah. I quite often have to go and lay down for an hour before I can then <clears throat> you know do approach the second half yeah, of the yeah. day. Um, yeah, just the simplest things are quite exhausting and. I, I'll always remember the very first time I went to Tesco's. <laughs> and you know, I like I planned it, you know, the day before, right, I'm gonna go to Tesco's tomorrow and get a couple of bits mm. and drive my car and I'm gonna go on my own and I was terrified. Yeah, nice. No, you know, it was it was like this huge mission <laughs> and um yeah, I did it, I did it, but it, yeah, it was it was tough. Yeah, it's it's amazing how Thing, you take things for granted as such when you're not in this position and it's just those little things and things that are actually sometimes the most difficult yeah yeah Absolutely. like yeah it's and just surviving yeah a, a, a normal a normal day you know not doing anything particularly special but you know it just yeah the simplest things put trying to put your socks on or trying to get your leg up to your chest to do all that get your shoes on and yeah. your transfers it is physically and mentally exhausting, but yeah. day by day, you practice and you get better and better and get a bit more confident, and then yeah. before you know it, it does. And then you say with the normal. background you had with the military, you said like it gives you that sort of mindset to be able to do these things, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. most of the time, you know, not always, you know, any human as everyone else is, and yeah, I still had, you know, bad days and mm. dark times with it, and I did you know, go through a bad patch of, of depression, um, which I would have thought I would have had in hospital, but I didn't. Mm. It wasn't until I got home that that hit me. Yeah. And I think, again, it was the reality of, this is it now, you mm. know, this this is my life, yeah. starting all over again from this, from this very moment. And um, again, you know, you're not quite really prepared yeah. for that. Um, so yeah, some some dark times and 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 you know accepting other issues. Yeah. As well, I started to have a few other problems um, coming out of hospital. Um, I think it's easy to think, looking at somebody in a wheelchair, that the only issue is not walking, but mm. it it's uh, far from it. The yeah. Not walking part is definitely the easiest bit. For me, I, I very rarely have cried because I can't walk. Yeah. It's actually the other issues underlying that you can't see that are the problem. Yeah. Um, and that's what I struggled with the most and have done on and off for the whole time that I've been injured. Yeah. So. Should we go into that further? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, like, I know about some of the things, but, like, what sort of things um, have you like, had medically and that that have been the more troubling things as such? There, there's a whole list of stuff, um, but your organs don't work in the same way um, as they, they did before, and um, they can become more sluggish, or you can get different problems with them that make things very, very dif difficult yeah. um, just to be able to function and to get out and about normally. So I've had to adapt my bladder and my bowel care uh, routine using different things to help me so that I can be fully in control and fully independent. Yes. Um, and early on that took a bit of exploring. There are many different things out there that spinal injured people use and it's just mm. finding the right thing that works for you. Yeah. Um, but, so yeah, I, I, I got on top of all of that and then things were good for, for a few years, yeah. you know, just sort of ticking along nicely. Um, and then it's about three and a half years ago, I started getting some more problems, mm. um, which went on for, for quite, quite some time before. Well, we, we tried lots of things uh, before, you know, getting the scalpel out. We yeah. wanted to see if we could, you know, Yeah, obviously, out. like surgery, last options. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but unfortunately, in my case, it got to a point where the only option that I did have was major surgery, and mm. so I had to have a, a major 
uh, bladder reconstruction, um, which was an eight hour long operation um, involving removing part of my, my bowel and sewing that into my bladder and then making a new channel um, to be able to empty my bladder from. Um, it wasn't just the one operation either, it's quite a bit of a uh, recovery process and I had to go in and have a couple more operations. Yeah. So it took quite a while from beginning to end from when I started having the problem to when I finally yeah. got completely sorted. Um, and it, it was quite an ordeal. Uh, mm. It mentally, um, it made me feel like I was back to when I first had my accident, yeah. if I'll be honest. It was do you know, partly a little bit worse because when you have your accident, um, everybody's around you, yeah. all your family, all your friends, you're in a hospital, you've got all the staff, the nurses, doctors, everything else. But when this happened to me, firstly, it wasn't something I was totally comfortable to talk about to everyone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was at home. I was stuck at home a lot. And yeah. Quite often. You've got a support network around you. What a, as big a support network yeah, around you. Yeah. It's quite different. I got quite depressed. And if I'd be honest, I probably hid away a little bit as well. I was very, very poorly, mm. um, constantly sick uh, and didn't have the energy to to do anything, I, you know, I wasn't able to do much sport, even to take my dogs for a walk, um, you know, it really tired me out. If, if I had a day where I tried to do a few bits, then I'd be in bed for two days yeah. afterwards because I was, you know, so exhausted. And, and this went on and on. And as I say, we got to the point where surgery was my only option. So yeah. I went through all of that, um, not on my own, my partner uh, supported me massively and also, you know, it's a lot for him as well yeah. to, you know, go through. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what led me on to, to why I did the Invictus Games. 